Hey boys and girls, the Junk Man here with another detailing related video. And a brother in his garage productions is still in Boise, Idaho at the garage of Levi Gates here at Hawks Detail. How's it going, uh, Good. Levi? Good, AJ. Welcome to the shop. All righty. Today we're going to bring a topic that I think a lot of people will find interesting. And that is going to be our favorite paint topping and why. So I'm going to go ahead and go first on this one. I'd appreciate it. Mine is probably pretty short. Uh, I come at this from a weekend warrior perspective. You, of course, come at this from a professional detailer's mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, what I like to do is once my paint is perfected, is I go to a sealant. Mm -hmm. Usually the sealants I use require up to 36 hours to cure. Mm -hmm. Once it cures and I have wiped it down a second time, I then use a carnauba paste wax on top of that. Uh, and I'm a big fan of Colonite's uh, carnauba paste waxes. So that combination right there works really well for me, which is different for a lot of folks. Yep. And that's mainly because one, I know how to touch my paint. Mm -hmm. I don't touch my paint wrong. I don't create damage. So that works. Number two, I have a garage. Yes. And that is really nice. I am not being bombarded by the elements. Uh, so I don't run into that. Uh, number three, you know, I'll mention it. Uh, when I'm at the supermarket, I park at the supermarket down the street. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I park way out in the back 40. So I'm real cognizant of when I bring the car out, where I'm going, and you know, I pay attention to all that stuff. Now, this is also a reason why I would hate to have a million dollar car. Yeah. Because if I'm all skitsy about a, oh, it was 50,000 when it was new, you know, everybody still thinks it's worth 50,000 when they see it because I take care of it. But if I'm skitsy about that, well, I, I could just, I probably would never drive like a, uh, what's the Enzo? Yeah. You know, Ferrari yeah. Enzo. I probably would never drive the thing. And that, that'd be a waste of a car. So because of the elements that I expose my car to, which is really only spring and summer, or I should say summer and fall. Yeah. Because we back in Kentucky, we get tornadoes and hailstorms and stuff. So summer and fall, I'm driving it. Winter and spring, it pretty much sits. Yeah. You know, so. What uh, do you use on your daily driver? My day, and that's a great question. That is a great question. I mean, you got to drive it in the winter. You got to drive it in the spring. All year round, through all weather, everything. And a lot of people ask me that question. And the answer is nothing. I don't do <laughs> nothing to my, that daily driver, man, I treat that thing like, this. as a matter of fact, it looks so ugly that when I'm driving down the road, cars move away, you know, and they're like, he definitely ain't got insurance. <laughs> That's the way they look at that car. But I love that because I can drive it to the supermarket, yep. park right next to the handicap spots, bam, doors are yep. coming up yep. against it. But it's made out of steel, you know, or metal, I should say. It's got them metal bumpers on it. Uh, it's, a, it's a battle wagon. It's a 79 El Camino. Yep. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of money in the motor and the drivetrain. Yeah. It's a sleeper. It's what I use to make guys with new cars feel bad. <laughs> That's what I have fun doing with that though. car. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that keeps me from having to worry. So I've kind of got a unique situation, right. uh, unlike a lot of folks who want to take care of their daily driver. So my answer is drive a beater. Yeah. That is really not a beater. <laughs> and use a good proper paint sealant and... A on, good oh yeah, Carnauba on, wax on your on your yes on, on my good car yeah. that I'm gonna drive when it's really nice out. So that is the way I, I work it. Uh, it works great. Uh, I left some water spots on the car for at least eight months. They washed right off. Yep. Didn't I mean, didn't even think about etching into the clear coat. So from a weekend warrior's perspective, who has a car that sees only certain conditions, I have a certain way of protecting as far as having a garage and stuff. 
this is the way I do it. It is not conducive to everybody out there, but it works great for me. Now, from a professional detailer's perspective, let them have it. Well, it depends on the price as to how much the customer wants to spend on their vehicle. Ooh, big um, time. I basically break things down into levels of protection um, as to how long of longevity they want to put. I want to find out how they care for it. Do they Ooh. run it through a car wash? Do they wash it at home? Do they, um, you know, do they take the same level of care? Are they bringing it to us? And then it's going to sit in the garage for and only drive out in spring and summer. Ooh. In Idaho, we still have four seasons here. Um, so it just depends on what it's going to see. We have de-icer de and things like that that are going to sit and do a lot of damage to the vehicles. Now, so it depends on the price and how they want to drive. That's my first thing I check for. Okay, and one thing that we definitely should point out is uh, you'll, you'll see advertised waxes and sealants, and they'll say, this will last three years, this will last six months. And that is such a broad and somewhat misleading yes. uh, type of advertisement because we both know that a car sitting in the Arizona desert where it's 120 degrees in the shade, that wax is going to last completely different yep. than someone whose garage kept uh, environmentally controlled you know, temperature. It's, it's going to be two extreme different uh, lasting times yeah, exactly. for that product. And so when you read that, you know, definitely for the viewers, when you read something like that, you have to consider the environment that your car lives in, garage, not garage, the extreme weather conditions, all of that stuff has to be taken into consideration. Yeah, so I basically find out how much they're looking to get. So if I have a customer that comes in four times a year and they keep their car really clean already and maybe they hand wash it themselves at home, um, then I'll get them on something where they don't really need a lot. We're basically keeping the paint as revived as possible and protected. Now, I'll use different types of sealants. I'll use different types of uh, waxes. Ooh. We'll use uh, spray waxes from Optimum or MVP. We'll use paint sealants from Optimum and MVP. Um, we even have our own in-house Carnuba paste wax called Master Shine. Mm -hmm. And we'll use all of these things on customers' cars. I also do ceramic coatings for customers as well. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's a price point. It's how much do they want to spend on their vehicle? How much are they, are they looking to get out of the paint? Now, on a customer's car that's going to, they want to run it through the car wash three Ooh. times, two, three times a week. Ooh. And it's the brush wash that, that mm. beats up the car. I, I don't in full faith enjoy selling a ceramic coating to a customer. Right. With yeah. That. Oh, yeah. You know, we're yeah. talking thousands of dollars into correcting the finish and then coating it for them to literally destroy the paint. Right. I mean, exactly. it, it yeah. basically looks like someone washed it when they're through and they've come back three to six months later that they've washed it with a Brillo pad. Yeah. yeah. Um, Actually, so had someone do that. On some of those, I, I like to find out how they wash it. Now, if it's a customer and say it's like the Rag Cobra where it's gonna it's gonna go to shows, it's gonna sit in a garage. Uh, the only thing we really have to worry about is getting in and out of the car or people touching the car. Mm -hmm. um, in that instance, then we'll correct it. We'll put a ceramic coating on it um, to make it stay nice. Now with some ceramic coatings, you can't top them with a wax or a sealant. You end up voiding the warranty. With uh -huh. other ceramic coatings, you're more than welcome to do that. It's not going to void the warranty. It's just going to change the surface tension of the vehicle. Okay. Um, now explain that. Explain so, that. so your surface tension is your water beating, your water sheeting, um, similar to, to how we we're talking about when you're rinsing a car off with water. You're using your hose method. Uh -huh. um, the way the water is going to cascade off the vehicle. Okay. Is now, it going to be a positive thing or a negative thing? It depends on the product that you use. Okay. Now, right. most ceramic coatings create a super hydrophobic surface. So with that, water is not going to want to stick or stay on the paint surface. Okay, okay. Now, if you take a car that's been coated with something that has a super hydrophobic surface, depending on the, on the coating, mm -hmm. when you put a topper on that of a certain type of sealant or a, just a normal standard Carnuba paste wax, mm -hmm. you change the surface tension of that. So you take something that doesn't allow water to stick to it, uh -huh. and you give it a surface that now water beads beautifully and uniformly on the okay. surface. 
or you take something that's designed to fully sheet water completely off. Like, just like they say, it's a sheet that just right. gets blown off in the wind, basically. Yeah. Uh, you put, you change the surface of it. So, unless it's the product that creates a surface that it changes that surface tension. I love waxing a car. There's something therapeutic and yes. zen-like about yes. that. Yes. And so I try and sell coatings and products that work with customers that want to do these things. Now, on the coatings, uh, you explain that there's different types and the different types of ways that they react, the things that you can do with them, without them. Uh, is there any kind of certification required to become a shop that installs coatings? Depending on the coating. Okay. Some coating companies and some coating manufacturers mm -hmm. want you to be certified in certain, um, maybe you have a certification through the IDA, which is the International Detailing Association. Maybe you've attended a, uh, a detailing school, um, or they ask that you be an authorized user. Uh, certain companies ask that you send in pictures or videos of your correction in full sunlight. They want to make sure that you know what you're doing correcting the car because once you apply a coating you want to make sure that oh, you've yeah. got you every, know, every defect yeah, you can out of it yeah. before you put a coating on because you're basically adding yeah. another another layer of clear coat right as it as it seems so getting that they want to make sure that you have the best uh, correction availability now there are coatings that are uh, lower longevity so some are one year two year um, that you can that anybody can buy mm -hmm. and put on your car. Okay. It's not going to last as long. They're not going to be able to warranty it. It's not going to come with a warranty, but it's not the higher end authorized okay. or uh, certified product. Okay, those and, are only available to authorized installers. Okay, and even though you get something uh, like that, the higher end, uh, better quality, that doesn't mean that you can go four wheeling through a bush. No with it and it's going to protect your paint. No, no. Uh, and you still have to practice uh, proper paint touching exactly. methods. Exactly. Because a lot of people are under the uh, See, assumption that, oh, it's got a coating. Oh, I can do everything yeah, now. No, you know? uh, scratch resistant doesn't mean scratch resistant. <laughs> it's not, it's yeah. not going to stop, you know, you or me taking some sandpaper to it. It's uh, going to scratch. Exactly. Um, what it is going to do is I've got a coating on my minivan and mm -hmm. I've got a two year old little boy. He likes to take his Hot Wheels car oh. and walk in the door Ooh. and run it down the side like a racetrack. <laughs> yeah. My daughter will grab a stick and bring it in to show me mm. while I'm working in the garage next to the car. And I love daddy. Yeah, and she'll, <laughs> she'll show me the stick. Now, yeah. it, it having that coating allows me a little bit of uh, uh, comfort because mm. I know that hopefully it's going to protect against those things. Okay. I know it's not going to fully protect, mm -hmm. but it's going to give me some level of, uh, you know, the ability to sleep at night. Okay. That I'm not going to spend a few hours fixing the door or something. Okay. Um, but I do train all my all my customers how to take care of their car after. If they get a coating and they get a coating installed by our shop, mm -hmm. We teach them proper washing techniques. We make them come back in after the first month, uh, show them how to wash the car. We provide the first car wash free, um, show them how to, how to properly touch, use their car. We provide them with towels and products uh, to make sure that they know how to do it at home. And you know, some of them come every month or every two weeks and get their car washed here because it's just easier. Okay, to have us so, do it. so I think it would be fair to say coming from a professional detailer's point of view, that you are pro coatings yep. and um, think they are worth the money. They are worth the money. Okay. As long as you know what you're getting into. Okay. All right. And coming from a weekend warrior's perspective, as of July uh, 9, or 19, I'm a decade behind, uh, 2016, I have not played with any coating. So you're gonna get the thumbs up from Levi and you're gonna get the neutral <laughs> from the junk man, okay? So I'm still out to lunch on that one. So uh, that right there covers our favorite paint toppings and why we like them, all right? Coming from Boise, Idaho, this is the junk man hanging out with Levi Gates at 
his beautiful garage here. This is a nice place you, you got here. Thank you. I, I really enjoy it. Hawks Detail. If you're in the Boise, Idaho area, uh, you can come over here and have your car professionally taken care of in Boise, Idaho. Home of the Rag Company. Dot com. This is the Junk Man shining out. If you really liked this series and you want to see more, you need to voice your opinion. Uh, write it in the comment section. Give the Rag Company a call. Give Levi a call here at Hawks Detail. Or and email me at Levi at theragcompany.com. There you go. And again, let us know if this is something you want to see again.